it. And the true horizon down below where it's black, what you are seeing there is air glow, which is an aurora light phenomenon uh, in the upper atmosphere where it just faintly glows uh, a green to a slightly pink color. Uh, the same colors that you see in Aurora. And here is another example of air glow with a, a star shining through the air glow. And down below on the true Earth's horizon, you can see some city light that have been streaked because you, you can't track both the stars and the Earth at the same time from an orbital perspective. And again, the stars are shining through the atmosphere, which is glowing due to this air glow phenomenon. And here's another example of air glow with stars going through. And it's kind of hard to get an exposure that doesn't both overexpose the air glow and the stars at the same time. And here the air glows a little bit on the washed out side. Now here's a a uh, wide angle view of the air glow showing Earth's true horizon and then above the, the horizon you could see about at the 100 kilometer level you could see this faint air glow band and again uh, this is an aurora type phenomenon where the uh, atomic oxygen in the upper atmosphere uh, gets excited from uh, solar particle bombardment and it uh, gives off light in the green and in the red. Now, we've been having some extraordinary auroras recently, and this is Aurora Borealis uh, uh, over northern Canada. And again, uh, tweaking the cameras up, the digital cameras for low light level, we've been able to record some spectacular aurora displays uh, as we go over the nighttime region over northern Canada. And right now we have a... Uh, waxing gibbous moon, which is illuminating the cloud cover on the surface of Earth. So it gives this interesting effect of seeing, of being able to see both the Earth and the true Earth's horizon as well as the aurora. And on the original, still uh, digital pictures, you could see uh, red color bands above the green color bands. And these color bands are due to atomic oxygen being excited by charged particles spiraling down the Earth's magnetic field. And the aurora tends to be concentrated around the magnetic pole, which puts it somewhere north of Hudson Bay in Canada. And the green wavelength is around the 526 nanometer wavelength line of oxygen free. And the red, with, uh, the red wavelength, when you can see that, is around 630 nanometers, which I believe is oxygen 5. And again, we've been seeing some outstanding displays of aurora activity during our nighttime passes over Canada. And from an orbital perspective, you can see both aurora and the air glow. And as you look towards the patch where aurora is concentrated, you can see air glow. You can see this ever-present uh, band of air glow, and it, it becomes more intense as you get closer to the aurora activity. Don, when we look at some of this uh, aurora down link, we're wondering whether or not we see some blue and some yellow hues within the aurora as well. I think you do. I think you do. And, and some of that may be the moonlight because uh, we have a waxing gibbous moon, which is near full. Uh, it's uh, putting a fair amount of light on the Earth. And, and fortunately for the balance of the exposure, the Earth does not get overexposed from the moonlight. And here we have a special treat. Not only do we have aurora and air glow, but we managed to capture the Manicouagan impact crater, which is in uh, northern Canada, at the same time illuminated by the, the, the waxing uh, gibbous moon. So here you've got two uh, fascinating uh, uh, astronomy uh, space phenomena. You've got uh, asteroid impact damage on the surface of Earth as well as uh, charged particles from the sun exciting atomic oxygen and giving us these nice displays of aurora. Our second last prime minister comes from a small town very close to that crater. Wow. You could, you could actually see city light approaching the Manicouagan impact crater.
And here's another uh, curtain. Uh, they call these structures, uh, at least from a ground vantage point, they're, they're often referred to as curtains. And from an orbital viewpoint, the, the structures appear a little differently. They look more like hoops, and this is sort of the edge of an aurora hoop. And again, these are kind of activities that we do in our spare time uh, up here uh, when we have spare moments on Saturday in between working on uh, oxygen regulators and things like that. Uh, we'll set the, uh, the cameras up and, and do nighttime photography or daytime photography or work on little fluid flow problems. I don't think that again, hey, uh, from our perspective, you just can't have too many Aurora pictures. So I apologize if I'm putting too many of them together here. These are phenomenal. Uh, no one can say that the nighttime view of the Earth is not every bit as spectacular as the daytime view.